Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a couple weeks since I uploaded, but I'm back at it. Anywho, um, I bought a new car. Check it out. This is a 328i 2010 with about 120,000 miles on it. It has got, let me do it real quick. It has got the brownish, reddish color interior to it. Um, it's got a tear there and some cuts over there. But uh, overall, it's in pretty decent condition. I purchased it like a couple weeks ago. Um, shout out to my homeboy Mike for helping me pick that thing up. Um, and this will be my new daily driver. I sold the gold BMW, it's no longer here. I sold the 335i, um, in which I made a pretty healthy profit, which is awesome. Um, but anywho, I need to do the basic maintenance on this car. Uh, one thing I did notice is that the oil filter housing gasket was leaking, and there's like a puddle of oil inside here. Let me show you guys. That's where the oil filter housing gasket lives, and as you can see, it's definitely leaking from that area. Super simple to change out, so my plan today, at least right now, is to go ahead and change that uh, gasket out, um, and then I wanna change the air filter. Um, so I have to remove the air box, change the air filter real quick. Um, but I'm waiting for UPS or Amazon or whoever to go ahead and drop off the oil and filter for this car so I can go ahead and do an oil change as well. So back at it. I'm gonna bring you guys along with me. Appreciate y'all watching. Please subscribe if it's your first time here or if you've watched the videos before and you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, you guys, to go ahead and start this process off, I'm going to loosen up the oil filter housing cap or the oil filter cap um, so that that oil can begin to like drain to the bottom there so I don't have a bunch of oil uh, whenever I release uh, the oil filter housing. So let's go ahead and loosen this bad boy up. It's all loose. Let's get that oil there at the bottom. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and remove this air duct here that goes into your air box. It's just a Torx bit. Uh, this one specifically is a T20. Two Torx bits, one here. Well, and then you have the disconnected from the air box. They're just on clips, so you just pull the clips back and back, and then this should come right out. Easy peasy. So we'll put this off to the side. All right. Now you have a lot more access to get to. Um, the oil filter housing gasket. And it looks like there's about three uh, E socket bits. And I want to figure out what sockets they are real quick. So I've got my set of Pittsburgh sockets here. And I think they're these 12s, but let's see. Maybe they're a little smaller. All right, they are, they're E11s gonna pull that off and have it ready uh, but first you're gonna want to go ahead and disconnect these electrical connectors because there's two of them on here there's one here at the top I'm sorry at the bottom and one here at the top so let's do that Unos and dos let's see am I gonna have to take that oh yeah I am gonna have to take that intake off uh, looks like they're gonna, you're going to have to do a bit more. I'm going to have to take this whole top section off and take this off and loosen this intake bolts because it looks like there's one bolt that's going to be super hard to get to, one of those e-socket bolts, uh, without doing any of that. So we'll go up to the top and take some of this stuff off and then uh, get this cap off. Let's do it. Top 
top section, uh, the cowl, the cabin air filter, all that stuff is taken off. Super simple to do. It's a bunch of 8 millimeters. In this case, it was like a 10 mil that was holding the cowl down. Um, and then this just clips off because it's connected to it and it slides into this clip. And this is just three different clips as well. So all that is super simple to take off. I did it kind of quick because I've done it like a million times at this point. But if you're going to do it, it's very simple. Um, but now let's go ahead and grab some Allen keys and then go ahead and get this cover off here. So. Alright. Yeah, we got that cover off. Let me show you guys. Pretty simple to take that cover off. That was a. Uh, what size is this here? That was a five mil Allen key. A couple different uh, locations. You got four of them on here. So you got one here. Um, this is the back side of it. So there's one in the middle, one on the back left, and two in the front here. Pretty simple to take that off. Now we have more access to this electrical clip. So we'll go ahead and take that one off. Very simple. Put it all to the side temporarily. Now, what I remember from doing this before on the 335 was I needed to uh, loosen up the intake uh, to be able to get to that screw right there. Um, if you can't get to that screw, you can't take this thing off. So um, luckily, this intake, intake is super easy and accessible and it's all just 10 millimeter screws and you just take those off um, just enough. You don't have to take the whole intake off pull it off just enough uh, to be able to uh, get to that screw there so I'm gonna go ahead and start loosening up uh, these bolts here and kind of just make sure there's nothing else I need to take apart I think that's it though um yeah let me go ahead and start unscrewing those and see if I run into anything else I need to take apart. I went ahead and removed those. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different. They're actually 11 mil. I said 10 earlier, but they're 11 mil. Um, you just want to move it just enough so you can get your uh, drill or you can get your uh, socket wrench into there. So I'm probably going to use a socket wrench and a swivel um, bit to be able to get to that uh, e-socket. Um, but it's a little bit loose. There's probably a little bit more you can disconnect in order for you to have more access. Um, I'm just gonna try and make it as minimal as possible. Um, but just a heads up, this is just the N52, uh, basic N52 motor. Um, so I think that's all you need to do to get those off. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and remove some of these e-sockets now. And uh, we'll see if we can get it off with just that, with just that or if we need to do a little bit more. So. I'm going to put you guys back on the stand. Let's do it. All right. I got that last uh, bolt cracked. I just used a 516th Allen key to get to it because there's a cool in front of it. Um, so it makes it a little bit hard to actually get to this bolt that's right there. But 5 sixteenths fits on there perfectly, but obviously you just want to, you know, crack it with this and kind of just be careful because you don't want to trip that one. It would be kind of super hard to take out. But I'm fairly certain it's just those three um, E socket bits that you have to take off. After you take those off, um, you'll see that this thing is loose and some of the fluids that's in there will start spilling out. So let's go ahead and get the... Uh, Let's get the last one off and then uh, move this uh, oil filter housing out of the way so we can change the gasket. At least let's hope it's that easy.
All right, you guys, that thing does not want to come off. <laughs> I'm sure I can get it off with a little bit more fighting, but it's almost not necessary because I do have full access to everything. So if you want to take it off, you can take it off. You're just going to have to fight a little bit longer than I did. Um, if you don't want to take it off, you can get away without doing that. So let's go ahead and clean up these services. Well, first, let's take off this old uh, oil filter housing gasket. We got the old oil filter housing gasket off and I'll show you guys right here where that coolant passage was it's super loose and super flimsy and it was actually a little bit like uh, like it overheated at some point and it kind of melted this gasket um, everywhere else is seems to be fine just that one point was pretty bad so maybe it was just leaking kind of coolant a little bit of oil uh, for a good long time so I'm gonna go ahead and clean the surfaces we're gonna toss that gasket. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean all the surfaces. Um, I'm probably gonna take like carb cleaner, spray it on this rag, and then kind of take a Phillips head and wipe all up in there um, so that whenever I do seat my new gasket, it's all clean and clear. So let me go grab some carb cleaner and new glove. So I've got my surface that I'll be mating to, um, all clean, and I've got the outside of this clean, but I'm going to actually grab inside of all those little passageways where the filter actually sits. So let me go ahead and grab my rag, um, some cleaner, and then uh, my flathead. Wasn't that bad. I'm gonna go ahead and hand tighten this oil filter cap back on and clean up some of my mess. And what you're gonna do to get this thing back together is just do the opposite of what you did to take everything apart. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together and then I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this air filter. Uh, changing that out, which is super simple. So I'll get back with you guys whenever I get on the air filter. All right. All right, you guys. So the oil filter housing gasket is done. Now it's time to go ahead and move on to the air filter box. But just to show you, you put your connections back on, make sure you do that. Um, one screw down there, one screw at the top, and one screw right there. That's why you have to remove this. Um, super simple. It's all 11 millimeters up here to take that off. And this is a E socket here. Um, make sure to clean up any oil right here because you don't want that getting on the belt. Like I said, it can slip off the pulleys and that's something you definitely don't want. Um, in the case of a 328i 2010 with an M52 and no oil cooler um, or no oil filter uh, gasket, you do not need to remove this. You can get away without doing it. Just be careful because you're gonna be twisting this rubber hose a little bit and you don't want that to break, so. There's that. So, anywho, as far as changing your air filter, you're gonna need to, it's kinda hard for you guys to see maybe, but um, this is your mass airflow sensor. You're gonna wanna unclip that and go ahead and pull it out. So let me see if I can do it with the camera in my hand and with my fingernail, not really. Um, you're gonna wanna unclip that, get that out. You're gonna wanna unscrew that hose there um, and pull that off as well. And then take off these two here and that should release this whole box. As you can see, it's pretty loose um, already. So let's go ahead and get that mass airflow disconnected and that hose, that intake hose, and then those two bolts disconnected and get to our oil filter. I mean, oil filter. Let's get to our air filter. All right. Just like that, get a new air filter. Make sure all your connections are like reconnected. That's your mass airflow uh, sensor wire there. 
Um, this intake is screwed back in. Our box is screwed to its position. Um, oil filter housing gasket is all completed. All the screws are done. All the screws are screwed back in and all the electrical connectors are back on. Um, I cleaned up any residue that I had down there. Although there's still a little bit more I need to clean, but also off camera I actually cleaned the vano solenoids. There's two of them here. Um, intake and exhaust, but they're one 10 millimeter bolt each. Um, you pull them off, and you're gonna want to take car cleaner, spray them down, clean them up real good. Um, if you've ever experienced like small misfires and your car isn't throwing any codes for it, that could be your culprit. So it's healthy to clean them occasionally. So we got the oil for this car. I'm about to get ready to go ahead and do an oil change, but I think I'm gonna do that off camera. I hate a lizard. What's a lizard? All right, I got distracted, sorry. I'm gonna go ahead and do my oil change off camera. Um, it's pretty much a 17 millimeter bolt um, under your oil sump. You disconnect that, take the oil out. Um, obviously change your oil filter, change the gaskets too. And there's a uh, compression fitting on that 17, 17 millimeter drain bolt um, underneath the car. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and change that too. But uh, anywho, I feel like I rushed through this one and I have no idea why because I'm totally off and I don't have much to do. But um, I appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. I do apparently a ton of BMW stuff on the E90 platform. Um, at this point I've done work on a bunch of 328s, um, one 330, and I've had a 335i for maybe two weeks. Actually no, about a month. Um, love that car and I kind of miss miss it somewhat. Um, but anywho, I'm gonna do some power modifications to this one probably to go ahead and get it up to uh, a little bit more horsepower. I'm shooting for at least 250. Stock on this is like 215, so 250 would be nice. Um, I know there's like a, a stage two intake manifold that you can get with two diesel valves and um, I, I'm thinking that that would definitely help. It's supposed to increase the horsepower by around 20, 25 horsepower. So that should get me pretty close to where I want to be at. Um, obviously a cold air intake may do, you know, 10 horsepower, maybe not, I don't know. But um, I appreciate you guys watching. If you guys aren't subscribed already, please subscribe, hit the subscribe button. I'm still trying to make it to 50 subscribers. Sorry I took like a couple weeks off. It's been a busy time in my life, um, but I appreciate you guys. All right, I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you for watching. Peace out.